Baha al-Din al-Amiri was a scholar, philosopher, mathematician, astronomer, engineer, and architect, one of the most influential Arab figures, and indeed one of the most influential figures overall in shaping the scientific, cultural, urban, and intellectual identity of Safavid Iran. In his book, Kolazad al-Hazab, he posed several of what he called difficult problems to stimulate the solution and guide those endowed with brilliant faculties. Among them were three diophantine challenges that centuries later would be solved using the method of infinite descent. In recognizing the death, he was already sensing the kind of reasoning that Fermat would decades later formalize in Europe. One of these problems asked for three square numbers in geometric proportion and whose sum is also a square. Hence, a fourth power plus a square plus one must also be a perfect square. In 1810, English edition of Euler's Elements of Algebra, Volume 2, Johann III Bernoulli and editor John Hewlett contributed notes developing a related problem via infinite descent. In 1855, Angelo Ginocchi published an elegant proof of a more general equation employing infinite descent. Ginocchi began his treatment of the general equation by assuming x and y are co-prime, otherwise there would be a smaller solution. It follows that z must be odd. If x and y were both odd, the left-hand side would be of the form for n plus 3 while the right-hand side of the form for n plus 1. So this option is ruled out. Hence, x and y have opposite parity. Without loss of generality, let x be even and y odd. Treating the equation as quadratic in x squared, we can solve it, and after a few steps, find that the square of 2 times x squared plus y squared equals minus 3 times y raised to the 4 plus 4 times z squared which can be rearranged as 3 times y raised to the fourth equals a difference of squares. A common divisor of these factors must divide the sum for z. However, both factors are odd, since y is odd. So the common divisor cannot divide 4. It cannot divide z either, otherwise x, y and z would share a common factor, contradicting the copromality assumption. Therefore, these two factors are co-prime. Set y equals p times q, with p and q both odd. The problem now split in two cases. Case 1. 2z plus 2x squared plus y squared equals p raised to the 4. And 2z minus 2x squared minus y squared equals 3 times q raised to the 4. Then p raised to the 4 minus 3q raised to the 4 equals 2 times the sum of y squared plus 2x squared. We now examine the congruence of both sides modulo 16. For the left hand side, write p equals 2u plus 1 and q equals 2v plus 1. Notice that the fourth power of 2u plus 1 equals a times u times u plus 1 times u squared plus the square of u plus 1 plus 1. Since 2 divides the product of consecutive integers u and u plus 1, then the fourth power of 2u plus 1 equals an integer of the form 16r plus 1. Following the same reasoning, 3 times the fourth power of 2v plus 1 equals 3 times 16s plus 1. Hence, p raised to the 4 minus 3 times q raised to the 4 equals 2 times 8t minus 1, where t equals r minus 3s. On the right hand side, as x is even and y is odd, 2 times the sum of y squared plus 2x squared has the form 2 times 8n plus 1. Thus, p raised to the 4 minus 3 times q raised to the 4 is congruent to minus 2 modulo 16, while 2 times the sum of y squared plus 2x squared is congruent to plus 2 modulo 16, a contradiction which rules out this case. Case 2. 2z plus 2x squared plus y squared equals 3 times p raised to the 4, and 2z minus 2x squared minus y squared equals q raised to the 4. 
then 3 times p raised to the fourth minus q raised to the fourth equals 2 times the sum of y squared plus 2x squared. Substituting y equals p times q in the right hand side gives 4x squared equals 3 times p raised to the fourth minus q raised to the fourth minus 2 times p squared q squared, which can be factored as p squared minus q squared times 3p squared plus q squared. Hence, 4x squared equals p minus q times p plus q times 3p squared plus q squared. Since the sum of these two factors equals 4 times p squared, the greatest common factor is 4, consistent with p and q being odd. Likewise, p minus q plus p plus q equals 2 times p, so the greatest common factor is 2. We can therefore set p plus q as 2a squared, p minus q as 2b squared, and 3 times p squared plus q squared as 4c squared, from which we derive p equals a squared plus b squared, q equals a squared minus b squared, thus 4 times c squared equals 4a raised to the 4 plus 4a squared b squared plus 4b raised to the 4. Hence, a raised to the fourth plus a squared b squared plus b raised to the fourth equals a square. Recovering the original equation, but with smaller integers, since y equals p times q, which equals q times a squared plus b squared, thus b is smaller than y, leading to an infinite descent, and so proving that no integer solution exists. Johann III Bernoulli didn't tackle Baha al-Din al-Amiri's exact problem, but a closely related one, attempting to prove the impossibility that both x squared minus y squared and x squared plus 3y squared are perfect squares when x and y are odd and co-prime. The structure of his argument mirrors Genocchi's case too, when one arrives at p squared minus q squared times 3p squared plus q squared equals 4x squared, with p and q both odd and co-prime. Bernoulli, however, followed a different and natural lead, exploiting the parametrization of Pythagorean triples. If x squared minus y squared equals w squared, with x and y odd and co-prime, then necessarily x equals a squared plus b squared, and y equals a squared minus b squared. Substituting this into x squared plus 3y squared equals z squared and expanding the terms gives 4a raised to the fourth minus 4a squared b squared plus 4b raised to the fourth equals z squared. So dividing by 4 produces a raised to the fourth minus a squared b squared plus b raised to the fourth equals c sub 1 squared, where z equals 2z sub 1. Thus, Bernoulli reaches a raised to the fourth minus a squared b squared plus b raised to the fourth equals a square, while Genocchi began with a plus sign form. Genocchi must have noticed this alternative route but dismissed it. It indeed leads to a descent, but not for the original equation he was on. Bernoulli's final step is to add and subtract a squared b squared to c sub 1 squared, obtaining c sub 1 squared minus a b squared equals the square of a squared minus b squared. And by adding and subtracting 3 a squared b squared to c sub 1 squared obtains c sub 1 squared plus 3 a b squared equals the square of a squared plus b squared. He thus produces another pair of the same form u squared minus b squared and u squared plus 3 b squared again both squares, and indeed smaller, since w squared equals x squared minus y squared, which is bigger than y squared, which equals c sub 1 squared minus a b squared, and z squared equals x squared plus 3y squared is bigger than x squared, which equals c sub 1 squared plus 3 a b squared, thus achieving a descent, but unfortunately not iterating into an infinite descent, as we'll see next. Unfortunately, 
plus a flaw in Bernoulli's reasoning related to the parity, because in the Pythagorean parametrization, A and B have opposite parity. Starting from X and Y, both odd leads to C sub 1 odd, but AB even. While the difference of squares equation can be recast to C sub 1 squared minus the square of A squared minus B squared equals AB squared, thus producing a difference of two odd squares, the second equation, C sub 1 squared plus 3 times AB squared equals the square of A squared plus B squared, cannot be rearranged to an odd square plus 3 times another odd square. Hence, the descent fails to reproduce the original conditions. We can avoid this parity obstruction by using an alternative parametrization of primitive Pythagorean triples. Set x equals c squared plus d squared over 2, y equals c times d, and w equals c squared minus d squared over 2, with c and d both odd. Then x and y are both odd, as required. Substituting into x squared plus 3y squared equals z squared yields c raised to the fourth plus 14 times c squared d squared plus d raised to the fourth equals 4 times z squared. This can be rewritten as the square of c squared minus d squared plus the square of 4 times c times d, which equals 4 times z squared. Since z is even, we deduce c squared minus d squared is divisible by 4. Hence, c sub 1 squared minus the square of c times d equals the square of z squared minus d squared over 4, where z equals 2 times c sub 1. Moreover, because z squared equals x squared plus cy squared, which equals 8 times the sum of r times r sub 1 over 2 plus 3 times s times s sub 1 over 2, plus 4, it is not divisible by 8, so c sub 1 is odd. Therefore, c sub 1 and c times d are both odd, producing the required difference of two odd squares. Similarly, we can rearrange c raised to the fourth plus 14 times c squared d squared plus d raised to the fourth as the square of c squared plus 7d squared minus 3 times the square of 4 times d squared equaling the square of 2 times z. Since 4 divides both 2z and 4 times d squared, it must divide c squared plus 7d squared too. Hence, c sub 1 squared plus 3 times d raised to the 4 equals the square of c squared plus 7d squared over 4, again with c sub 1 and d both odd. Finally, these new squares are strictly smaller. C sub 1 squared plus 3 times d raised to the fourth is smaller than x squared plus 3 times y squared, since the square of c squared plus 7d squared over 4 minus the square of c squared plus d squared over 2 minus 3 times the square of c times d is a negative number. And c sub 1 squared minus the square of c times d is smaller than x squared minus y squared, since the square of c squared minus d squared over 4 minus the square of c squared minus d squared over 2 is also a negative number. Unlike Bernoulli's root, this construction reproduces the original form with odd variables and strictly smaller values. Therefore, it iterates to give an infinite descent, proving there are no non-trivial solutions. That's all, folks. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this content, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, leave a comment with your thoughts or questions, and share it with anyone who might find it valuable. Your support means a lot.